Hello everyone and welcome back to Potted Plant Entertainment. My name is Chris and in case you don't know, I review movies and I rank them on a scale of 0 to 100 in increments of 5. Today, we are going to be doing another Halloween special with A Nightmare on Elm Street. Not this one. I actually already reviewed this one about a year ago and I hate that movie. So if you want to see me ranting about how horrible this movie is, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But today, we're going to be talking about the good Nightmare on Elm Street that came out in 1984. And I am ripping my shirt to show you how much I love this movie. So, let me put this back here. And let's jump into it. So, Nightmare on Elm Street came out in 1984. And it stars Heather Langenkamp, Johnny Depp, and his very first movie, by the way. Robert Englund, John Saxon, Ronnie Blakely, Amanda Wise, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but Jesu Garcia. It was directed by Wes Craven, and it was produced by Stanley Duddleson and Joseph Wolf. And this movie tells the story of this, uh, this group of teenagers. They all start dreaming about this this killer with a burned face and who wears these gloves with like these claws on him and he's killing them in their sleep and this one girl named nancy is constantly managing to evade him and she decides that she is going to be the one to do something about this while he continues to headhunt her friends look this movie is a classic everybody has heard of a nightmare on elm street everybody knows this movie it's a horror classic it's iconic and everything about this movie is iconic, and we're going to be talking about that. So, let's jump right into it with my pros, uh, the music. The music is really, really good for this movie. They play it the same, pretty much the same day all throughout the movie, but it's really good. It's, kind of, it's very 80s, don't get me wrong. It's really, really 80s, but it's really good. The theme song and all the music, really, they play throughout this movie. It's really good. Uh, I love the sets in this movie, the, specifically the boiler room. Uh, a lot of the times in these nightmares, the characters find themselves in a boiler room with Freddy. And it's really, really cool how there's sparks going everywhere. There's, uh, there's always steam coming out of it. And the visuals in this movie are great, especially in the boiler room scenes when you see Freddy clicking his claws along these pipes. It's really, really good. Freddy himself is iconic. This is one of the most iconic movie characters of all time. Everything about Freddy is iconic the way he looks the way he talks everything he does he's just great the prosthetics and the makeup on him are fantastic he looks great uh not in the 2010 movie he looked terrible but in this movie he looks really really good uh and I, again as i was saying this movie is really iconic and i want to talk about some of my favorite moments from this movie because this movie has a lot of great moments there's this great scene where she nancy picks up the phone and it's like freddie's mouth is at the end of it and his tongue starts touching her there's this great scene where she's in the hallway in her school and her friend who was killed is in a bloody body bag and the legs get lifted up and dragged out of the frame uh and by far, one of the best ones is when she's laying in bed and you can see Freddy pushing through the wall like he's going to get her. And then as soon as she wakes up, it goes right back in. It looks, it's all phenomenal. All the visuals in this movie are great and the special effects as well. They're, they still hold up. This movie holds up perfectly. There isn't a shot in this movie that looks like outdated. Not one. This movie holds up very, very well. Um... I also love how like, 80s nostalgic this movie is. If you watch this movie, like I was saying about the music, this is a really 80s movie, but I don't mind that because I, I'm obsessed with 80s pop culture. Um, and one of the things that I really, really respect about this movie is just how really terrifying it is. You can argue there are scarier movies out there, but what you cannot argue with is that being deprived of sleep is terrifying when you're sleeping you that's like your safe space you're gonna go to bed you're gonna sleep and you're gonna feel better when you wake up right that's the way it goes well imagine being deprived of that imagine every time you go to sleep you're gonna get hunted by a serial killer that is one of the most terrifying things i can think of and that's one of the things that makes this movie so great um also there the trap setting sequence at the end of this movie is really great it's a great build-up to what's to come next this movie has really good suspense and build-up in it 
Uh, Nancy is a tough character. I mean, yeah, she does a lot of, like, running and screaming, but she knows how to take care of herself and fight when she really needs to, and I really like that. She's not, she sometimes is, but she's not necessarily, like, a damsel in distress. Um, now let's talk about my cons, because this isn't quite a perfect movie. It does have some minor flaws. For one thing, the movie's called A Nightmare on Elm Street, right? But, like, the... I never see, like, a street sign or anything that says Elm Street on it. So, it almost seems pointless to name it that. I, I don't know. I just... Am I the only one who's noticed that? How, like, Elm Street has nothing to do with it? That's kind of weird to me. Also, some of the character choices are kind of, like, kind of dumb. Like, like they follow something. And, you know, in real life, anybody with common sense would have just called the cops or something like that. Also, uh, Johnny Depp plays uh, Nancy's boyfriend, Glenn. And there's two scenes in the movie where she's like, just stay awake. Just stay awake. Just don't fall asleep for me. Just stay awake. But he can't do it. And it's kind of aggravating. Because one of them, she says, just stay up till midnight. How hard is it to just stay awake till midnight? But he can't do it. It's really annoying. Um, and at the end of the movie, when like she's, she's having her big showdown and chase whatever with Freddy. And she's yelling out the window to the police across the street to come help her. Nobody does. And it's like, why are they just standing around doing nothing? And then my biggest complaint with this movie is that she calls her dad. And she says, be here in 20 minutes to arrest the killer, right? Okay, I'm telling you right now, 20 minutes is not enough time to make the traps, set the traps, put her mom to bed, pray, fall asleep, and get Freddy. She does all of that in 10 minutes and then goes to bed. 10 minutes. She does all that in 10 minutes and then goes to bed to get Freddy. Yeah, that's pretty dumb, isn't it? Um, but look, I'm not going to complain about this movie too much. It does have some flaws, but this is this is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. I wouldn't put it up there with The Shining or The Sixth Sense, but it is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. And I'm going to give A Nightmare on Elm Street a 95. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Planet Planet Entertainment for more. Hit the like button. Leave movie reviews suggestions down in the comments down below. Follow me on Instagram at Planet Entertainment for channel updates, written movie reviews, and much love.